food that we buy lasts about two weeks. We spend like $125, $175 a month for groceries, if not more. You know, I've got like three teenagers, so, and, you know, about the end of the month, I start reducing to one meal a day so that I can make sure those kids got everything they need. You just do what you can, you know, to survive. I mean, that's about all it is, is survival. We really don't go too far out of the realm of what's necessary. You know, snacks aren't something that's something we buy a lot of. I mean, I just go along and see what's the less expensive. How much can I feed, how many people can I feed for that amount of money? Um, those types of things. So I spend a lot of time in frozen foods. I mean, when you get these, the family size, and they're $1.99, and you can feed four people with it, you know, versus maybe four with four dollars. I mean, what's your choice is going to be, you know? Especially when you're on a $200 a month budget for food. You know, you can't go down there and buy a five pound bag of oranges because that might be two meals for one bag of oranges. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. That's the reason why I think a lot of people that are disadvantaged are unhealthy. And a lot of times you borrow from your bill money, which puts you behind in your utility bills. You worry about, do I buy food or do I have electricity? Okay, if I can only send them this much, are they going to keep my power on or my gas or my water? You know, we never skimp on the rent. <laughs> the rent's something that, if nothing else, will have a roof. You know, of course we're dying young. <laughs> you know, 60 years old here versus 80 in the eastern section of the county, you know, because those people are more affluent. We don't have a whole lot of choices. You know, you do what you can. And breaking out of it is, is not easy. No. I read the book, uh, Don't Sweat Small Stuff, and it's wonderful, you know, but you're not living by life. Small stuff, it doesn't exist in my life because my life is like, everything's large. There's illnesses, there's worried about food, there's worried about whether I'm gonna have utilities, there's worried, those are what I stress about. And it's every, every day, you know, it never goes away. Because you think, well, the kid needs a new coat, okay? <clears throat> what can I borrow from to get this child a new coat? You know, it's always something's going to lose so that something else can be gained. And I'm, it's tiresome. I wake up every day and I think, okay, I got one more day. What am I going to do with this day? And there's days when I wake up and I'm like, oh, God, not another day. You know, there's times when you get so down. You think, Lord, this life's not worth living. You know, just let me go sleep. I don't want to wake up. But you wake up, and you keep fighting, and you hope that maybe that day will be a turnaround. It never is, but you hope it is, you know. And as long as you've got hope, as long as you don't give up. And I think that's part of the reason why I still move around like I do. Because I'm not going to let it beat me. It's going to have to get a whole lot worse. I mean, you know, I'm standing here right now, it's like, air is getting a little thin. <coughs> but... I'm not going to let it whoop me.